Ella Fitzgerald, known as the First Lady of Song and Lady Ella, was an immensely popular American jazz and song vocalist who interpreted much of the great American songbook. Ella Fitzgerald turned to singing after a troubled childhood and debuted at the Apollo Theatre in 1934. Discovered in an amateur contest, she went on to become the top female jazz singer for decades. In 1958, Fitzgerald made history as the first African-American woman to win a Grammy Award. Due in no small part to her vocal quality, with lucid intonation and a broad range, the singer would go on to win 13 Grammys in total and sell more than 40 million albums. Her multi-volume songbooks on Verve Records are among America's recording treasures. Born on April 25th, 1917, in Newport News, Virginia, singer Fitzgerald was the product of a common-law marriage between William Fitzgerald and temperance known as Tempe Williams Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald experienced a troubled childhood that began with her parents separating shortly after her birth. With her mother, Fitzgerald moved to Yonkers, New York. They lived there with her mother's boyfriend, Joseph De Silva. The family grew in 1923 with the arrival of Fitzgerald's half-sister, Frances. Struggling financially, the young Fitzgerald helped her family out by working as a messenger, running numbers, and acting as a lookout for a brothel. Her first career aspiration was to become a dancer. After her mother's death in 1932, Fitzgerald ended up moving in with an aunt. She started skipping school. Fitzgerald was then sent to a special reform school but didn't stay there long. By 1934, Fitzgerald was trying to make it on her own and living on the streets. Still harboring dreams of becoming an entertainer, she entered an amateur contest at Harlem's Apollo Theatre. At the contest, she sang the Hoagie Carmichael tune Judy, as well as the object of my affection, wowing the audience. Fitzgerald went on to win the contest's $25 first place prize. That unexpected performance at the Apollo helped set Fitzgerald's career in motion. She soon met band leader and drummer Chick Webb and eventually joined his group as a singer. Fitzgerald recorded Love and Kisses with Webb in 1935 and found herself playing regularly at one of Harlem's hottest clubs, the Savoy. Fitzgerald also put out her first number one hit, 1938's A Tisket, A Tasket, which she co-wrote. Later that year, Fitzgerald recorded her second hit, I Found My Yellow Basket. In addition to her work with Webb, Fitzgerald performed and recorded with the Benny Goodman Orchestra. She had her own side project too, known as Ella Fitzgerald and her Savoy 8. Hey, if you're enjoying this video, make sure you give it a like and subscribe to remember this if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all of our latest content. Following Webb's death in 1939, Fitzgerald became the leader of the band, which was renamed Ella Fitzgerald and her famous orchestra. Around this time, Fitzgerald was briefly married to Ben Cornegay, a convicted drug dealer and hustler. They wed in 1941, but she soon had their union annulled. Going out on her own, Fitzgerald landed a deal with Decca Records. She recorded some hit songs with the Ink Spots and Louis Jordan in the early 1940s. Fitzgerald also made her film debut as Ruby in 1942's comedy western Ride em Cowboy with Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Her career really began to take off in 1946 when she started working with Norman Grants, the future founder of Verve Records. In the mid-1940s, Grants had started Jazz at the Philharmonic, a series of concerts and live records featuring most of the genre's great performers. Fitzgerald also hired Grants to become her manager. Around this time, Fitzgerald went on tour with Dizzy Gillespie and his band. She started changing her singing style, incorporating scat singing during her performances. Fitzgerald also fell in love with Gillespie's bass player, Ray Brown. The pair wed in 1947, and they adopted a child born to Fitzgerald's half-sister, whom they named Raymond or Ray Brown Jr. 
The marriage ended in 1952. The 1950s and the 1960s proved to be a time of great critical and commercial success for Fitzgerald, and she earned the moniker First Lady of Song for her mainstream popularity and unparalleled vocal talents. Her unique ability to mimic instrumental sounds helped popularize the vocal improvisation of scatting, which became her signature technique. In 1956, Fitzgerald began recording for the newly created Verve. She made some of her most popular albums for the label, starting out with 1956's Ella Fitzgerald Sings the Cole Porter Songbook. At the very first Grammy Awards in 1958, Fitzgerald picked up her first two Grammys and made history as the first African-American woman to win the award for Best Individual Jazz Performance and Best Female Vocal Performance for the two songbook projects Ella Fitzgerald Sings, The Duke Ellington Songbook and Ella Fitzgerald Sings, The Irving Berlin Songbook, respectively. A truly collaborative soul, Fitzgerald produced great recordings with such artists as Louis Armstrong and Count Basie. She also performed several times with Frank Sinatra over the years as well. In 1960, Fitzgerald broke into the pop charts with her rendition of Mac the Knife. She was still going strong well into the 1970s, playing concerts across the globe. One especially memorable concert series from this time was a two-week engagement in New York City in 1974 with Sinatra and Basie. By the 1980s, Fitzgerald experienced serious health problems. She had heart surgery in 1986 and had been suffering from diabetes. The disease left her blind and she had both legs amputated in 1994. She made her last recording in 1989 and her last public performance in 1991 at New York's Carnegie Hall. Fitzgerald died on June the 15th, 1996, at her home in Beverly Hills. In all, Fitzgerald recorded more than 200 albums and some 2,000 songs in her lifetime. Her total record sales exceeded 40 million. Her many accolades included 13 Grammy Awards, the NAACP Image Award for Lifetime Achievement, and the Presidential Medal of Freedom. While some critics complained that her style and voice lacked the depth of some of her more bluesy counterparts, her success and the respect she garnered from the biggest names in the music industry showed that Fitzgerald was in a class all of her own. Mel Torme described her as the high priestess of song and Pearl Bailey called her the greatest singer of them all. And Bing Crosby once said, man, woman or child, Ella is the greatest of them all. Since her passing, Fitzgerald has been honored and remembered in many ways. The United States Postal Service honored the late singer with a commemorative stamp celebrating the 90th anniversary of her birth. That same year, the tribute album We All Love Ella, celebrating the First Lady of Song, featured such artists as Gladys Knight, Etta James and Queen Latifah performing some of Fitzgerald's classics. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you have a favourite Ella Fitzgerald song that you like the most or maybe a moment in her career that you remember the most? Let us know in the comments below and if you haven't already done so, Click the bell icon to stay updated on all of our latest content.